Hello there, musical people. Now you all know the parts and their songs. I'm sure you know recently Bethesda rolled out their new Creations. Essentially paid mods meant to take the place of Creation Club. Hey, wait a minute. I recorded this off of Bethesda's YouTube channel. That's Siren Root, Carve Brink. These are not Creations. These are mods made by the community. They're free and they don't cost money. There's one, Echoes of the Veil. Anyway, I would say that I'm an enjoyer of Skyrim mods and I enjoyed a few of the CC entries, but they had several large flaws. Quality, length, the fact that they can't have dependencies and no voice acting. Out of the original CC, I would say only Ghost of the Tribunal, The Cause, Saints and Seducers, and farming and fishing were really worth playing through slash using. They didn't compare with Dragonborn, Dawnguard, or Hearthfires, and they certainly didn't compare with the literal thousands of fan-made mods available for free. Heck, mods gave Ghost of the Tribunal voice acting and Saints and Seducers a new world space and a much better story. But with Creations, I was actually impressed. Seeing what was going on with the East Empire expansion, in that it introduced new game mechanics nobody had ever done and had voice acting, and Echoes of the Veil, vale, which adds reasons to be in Forgotten Veil, vale, one of my most hated parts of the base game. From what I've seen, the problems of quality, length, and voice acting have been fixed with the new creations. The problem of cannot have dependencies seems like it won't go away. And that's sad because a lot of the best mods are built on the backs of the modding community that came before. But that's really affecting big things like animations. With quest mods, there's never really been much in the way of innovation, so this can be forgiven. We have the opportunity to get some really awesome quest mods via creation. This is why I was so excited about the Bard's College expansion. Not just because I am a Bard, it's in the name of the channel. My first D&D 5e character was a red-haired Bard, not unlike the main character of this video, in appearance anyway. I like what bards have become in D&D. They went from useless fobs in older editions to being one of the most powerful classes in the game. And it seems like a crime that this faction was left barren and fairly useless but still left in the vanilla game. I mean, it's got one main quest and like a couple of side quests. The Bards College is apparently as well known a landmark from Skyrim as the Skullamance from WoW. You could have had an entire another storyline in vanilla Skyrim. Of course, the companion storyline kind of sucks, and it's in the game, so, eh. So anyway, I played it. I want to give you this disclaimer before you shell out $10. I run a heavily modded game of Skyrim. This includes several mods that alter the Bard's College. This mod made the unusual choice of creating an entirely duplicate Bard's College and putting the new NPCs there. Yeah, well, I'm gonna go build my own Bard's College with blackjack and hookers. Unfortunately, if you have any mods that alter the vanilla Bard's College or add any new PCs, they are most certainly in the original Bard's College. It just so happens my stew of mods changes the exterior a little bit, so my Bard's College load door leads to the original Bard's College, and the new NPCs are nowhere to be found, lost in the void of the new Bard's College. You can get around this by using the console, of course. Fortunately for you, there is also an unofficial patch hub on the Nexus, as of a few days of the creation coming out, so you don't have to drop all your college mods. More on mods and mod interactions and patches later. This mod picks up where the vanilla game left off. You can either begin by doing Tending the Flames and have a new college NPC accompany you, or you'll be contacted by her after you do King Olaf's ceremony and are a full-fledged bard. Either way, you're contacted by a mysterious archbard. You go to a party and get to perform a duel of insults, which plays out like a rap battle. Consider yourself challenged. It's only natural to be nervous. And is one of the most enjoyable parts of this mod. You get insulted and you have to respond in a way that makes sense, insults them in rhyme. Reminiscent of the Monkey Island series of games. And of course, for the first battle, you're meant to lose since you're completely untrained. When you get back, you'll have the option of going on one of the side quest lines or the main quest line with the Archbard. One of them has you working as an emissary for Valerine, which is essentially a spy network. It's like a better version of a speech game, and I really like this. The object here is listening to the NPC and figuring out their motivation, then convincing them to do something using different approaches. This is head and shoulders above Skyrim's flat speech checks. 
which offered you the ability to use speech occasionally, but had really no depth to it. Here's an example. Valerine wants you to approach a guard to replace her lost informant. You listen and realize he's a little proud of the stuff he does as a guard, keeping the people safe. You use that info to decide, huh, maybe if I popped him up even more and told him how awesome he was and how proud the people probably are of him doing his job, I could get him to do what I want. And damn, that kind of stuff is satisfying. People going on and on about their motivations is actually meaningful. It's a mini game, but it's not like Oblivion's hit the rotating circles game, which was absolutely terrible. <laughs> Meant nothing and was just an annoying way to level up your speech easily. I feel like this could be implemented into a solid new framework. Hey modders, you should get on this. The other side quest is essentially what the Greybeards do for you when they tell you where a word wall is, but for the resonating crystals that I'll get to later. And it also gets to other things, and for historical significance. Not as revolutionary, but I do like it. And when you finally decide to come back to Sledrig, the Archbard, you may find that there's nothing to do here. I usually have mixed feelings about mods that pigeonhole you into being the Dragonborn, but I can forgive it in this case, I'll get to it. Sledrig has been saying he's going to help you train your voice, and you may have thought he meant your singing voice, but anybody who's played Skyrim at all will know he means Thum, shouts. The main quest of the BCE is heavily Dragonborn focused. Sorry who people who wanted to just play a bard. You've got to be the Dragonborn. Once you've completed Way of the Voice, he'll take you to his pocket dimension, which is not as weird as it sounds, and teach you about resonating shouts, and a new skill tree on the rock wall over there. Side note, some Nords can shout, even if they're not the Dragonborn, and Sledrig is one of them, having a more respectable one or two shouts than the Dragonborn's like 20. Resonating shouts have different effects based on the shout. Unrelenting Force, for example, makes it repeat. Fire Breath makes it just go way farther. Which is a cool way to upgrade the base game system of shouts, but not overpowered like stuff like Thunderchild. That gets really into the weird, I'm gonna shout and um, reality's gonna change kind of stuff. Later on, a bard named Olvis will teach you to play instruments. If you do the vanilla, find my instruments quest for the other college members. So that'll allow you to play for people in bars and get money, just like a lot of the other bard mods. But also it lets you play for people in combat, giving them long-term buffs. Playing a freaking FF11 bard. Perfect for those who like to have an army of companions. One more thing Elvis will do for you is that when you go on an adventure, you tell him about it. And he will write a song that other bards will perform throughout the land. And you get to tell him what to put in the song. In no I run, there's a merry old band. Led by the fire of a warrior's brand. In much the same way you did with Bjarno in Tending the Flames. This is just taking what's already in the game and expanding it, which I really like. This is a fantastic idea. You get to write your own legend. I know for a fact you can have him write songs about the major quest lines like Thieves Guild, Dark Brotherhood, uh, the main quest, etc. But what could be a large, really cool project is if somebody made this into a framework and people made patches for stuff like Vigilant or Beyond Reach or anything in the legacy of the Dragonborn Museum. While I'm here, I want to point out other mods that also add to the college and that can work with this one, pairing with it like a fine wine with a steak. Most of the patches needed are just to move the NPCs added by the mod in question into the new version of the Bard's College. Bard's College Excavation has a patch. This adds an excavation for more knowledge in Dead Man's Respite after you do Tending the Flames. More to do in the Bard's College by Betalil requires no patch. The members of the Bard's College will give you four small quests after you finish Tending the Flame. There are no conflicts here. Good drop in. 3D NPC and Easy PG, the NPC part of the mod anyway, add new Bards to the College and they have great voice lines I've come to expect from these mods. Bards Reborn, Student of Song, adds a bunch of new furniture, like display cases, books, and a library to the college, as well as an entry to the college quest line that occurs before tending the flames. It also adds song spells. None of this conflicts with Bard College expansion, and honestly, before BCE came out, it was the biggest contender for the best Bard mod out there. It's very immersive. 
Unfortunately, there's no patch available, so you're going to have two bard colleges. One with lots of stuff, and one with all the NPCs. Also, the quest line to get in is tough. You have to take a bunch of entry exams. But you can use it in parallel. It'll just take much longer to get into the Bard's College to start BCE. I would recommend it for a full Bard playthrough, but not if you're raring to get into the Bard's College expansion creation right now. Skyrim's Got Talent by Jay Serpa gives you a lot of new songs you can play on your Bardic quest with buffs, and NPCs have a variety of reactions to your songs. This kind of does one of the things that BCE does, but it is an additional option. I would also like to add on three enhancements to your speech skill the Eloquent Reader, and Talking Level Speechcraft, since you're going to be doing a lot of talking in this mod, and at least some of it is dependent on your speech skill. An Immersive Speechcraft has a few options to really just mess with people when your speech inevitably gets really high. Of course, Ordinator vastly improves the speech tree, both allowing you to improve your shouts a bit and have better speech in general. Perform and get Animal Companions. And also, several cities are touched by Bard College expansion, so there are patches for several flavors of city and Bard College overhauls, included in the unofficial patch full mod. Well, that's pretty much all I got for today. I was going to do a full playthrough of this mod, and I still might do that later, but my particular style really requires me to put quests in specific places in the timeline. Yes, my channel has lore. Also, Let's Plays don't really do well. Figured people who don't usually watch my channel would enjoy this for now. So, is this worth $10? I think so. This sets a good baseline for what a quest mod could be for creations. So long, and thanks for watching.